1992 Disney logo knew to get in and out within 14 seconds. And that's a sin for this movie, for all the later movies that didn't continue this trend, but instead inflated the logo to deep throat viewers before every movie. And also because it's followed here by a 19 second Jim Henson Productions logo, giving us a total of 33 seconds of logos. Aww. The hell am I doing? I'm sinning the f***ing Muppets now? Christmas Muppets? Something that's pure joy? What are these decisions I've made in my life? How did I get here? Okay, get it together, Jeremy. You've got a job to do. I'm good enough, I'm smart enough, and doggone it, people hate me. Also, between the opening logos, the title cards, and the credits, I think we're already like 30% through the movie's runtime. London looks fake. Well, that was a fine meal. Yes, it was, wasn't it? Yes, where should we do now? Let's have a lunch. Get it? Because they're pigs. Hey, I'm being stolen! Hey, help me! Help me! As hilarious as this is, it does raise the question of what the cabbage says in other situations, besides during a kidnapping, like when he's brought home legally and sliced up for salad, or boiled alive to make some kind of crop. Sentient food is hilarious to a point, but then it undoubtedly always gets dark if you think about it for even a little bit. Now see, here's more cabbage, but this cabbage isn't sentient. Why? Why aren't these little onion egg daubers here sentient? All I'm saying is, whatever deity went around handing out intelligence and eyeballs in this universe did it in a very illogical manner. Well, would you look at these two little assholes right here. Hello! Welcome to the Muppet Christmas Carol. Roll gonzos. The Marleys were dead to begin with. Movie's adding more Marleys than the original. Okay, but they seriously both died at the same time? This guy sings about it paints you with indifference the way women paint with rouge. And the only reason is because it's not easy to rhyme Scrooge. And they needed to rhyme with Scrooge here. And it's a kid's movie, so they couldn't use Spooge. That's a porcupine on the right, I think. But what the f is this other thing? This is some kind of science lab test subject escape from the lab, right? It's not any animal I recognize. Even the vegetables don't like him. Yeah, I hear the eggplant emoji even refuses to show up on the selection board every time Scrooge tries to sect Bell. Please, sir, I want some cheese. Look around, kid. You are in a movie full of it. There goes Mr. Outrage. I'll tell you what, at least Mr. Outrage gets a ton of exercise. He's walked through the entire city center in order for the residents to sing this derisive song right to his face. Gotta keep that cold, evil heart in good condition, I guess. He has no time for friends or fun. Puppets on Muppets. These Muppet puppets can suck it. No cheeses for us, Mises. Goddamn, the mice need some grammar lessons almost as badly as they need cheese. It's already plural. You wouldn't say Chineses. Also, don't mice eat all kinds of and cheese is like a delicacy we leave out in the traps to tempt them? Cheese isn't their daily diet, right, greedy mice? He was hard and sharp as a flint. Slow down, Gonzo. I don't want to blow my load this early in the movie. Jeez, I didn't realize Dickens was this damn erotic. Although, the name should have tipped me off. As solitary as an oyster. Mr. Dickens has never eaten oysters with meat, where there are many on the plate and many in the toilet an hour later. But none are solitary. I guess he means before they are harvested, but they're out there in the water with a bunch of other oysters and shells. They don't come out, but maybe they don't want to. This is like calling residents of a retirement home antisocial just because they stay in their rooms most of the time. They're singing about how terrible he is, and he's just about to turn around suddenly and scare them all into scattering. So, can he hear this song they're singing about how awful he is? Does he hear no song, but still sense the presence of a crowd following him? How do the film musical rules work with regard to song? If the songs are just for the audience, then there's no reason for him to know there's a crowd behind him, or for them not to have a better excuse for following him. I'm back. You know, Scrooge is pretty much the only mother in this movie with a British accent. If they were gonna go this anachronistic with the dialect, why not just set this in Brooklyn or something? I don't care if they even call attention to this later on, it's distracting as hell. And I didn't mean to fall behind in the payment, Lord knows it being Christmas and all. Follow me here a moment. Who borrows money from a known asshat like Scrooge? Only the desperate, I guess. Those who can't go anywhere else. Which must mean he either has the best rates, <laughs> or he's one of the only guys in town loaning to really poor people, which ding ding ding. So then, if he's loaning to people that can't pay, he knows eventually they'll default. And maybe he can seize something if they took a specific loan out, like a home loan or a carriage loan. But even a home from someone like that would not be desirable to Scrooge. And why is there never any time given to his side real estate business that somehow resells piece of slum properties for a profit after the loan's default. Okay, I'll admit I've rambled here, and I'm just as lost as you are regarding my original point, but I think we can all agree that I worked hard enough writing all this out, and it's still worth sending the film for. One might say that December is the foreclosure season. Harvest time for the moneylenders. No one told Michael Caine he was acting opposite Muppets, so he just went and turned in the greatest Scrooge performance ever. How would the bookkeepers like to be suddenly... Unemployed! He he this is my island in the sun. Hilarious moment, but where did the costumes come from? How can I be afraid of Scrooge or the ghosts or anything in this movie if you're saying so little what I'm seeing is real that nothing matters? What right of you to be merry? You're poor enough. F***ing asshole. Rich and hoards money? Fine. But going out of his way to mock his own flesh and blood for being poor? 
fucking asshole. I hope the ghost of Christmas past drops his ass on an icy cobblestone road. God damn. Funny visual, but Rizzo's hand and lower mouth are getting third degree burned right now while you're laughing. We'd like to speak to you about a donation. Bunsen and Beaker come here asking Scrooge for a charitable donation because they are literally the only two people left in London that don't know Scrooge is a penny-pinching, poor people-hating dick white. I do not make merry myself for Christmas. You know, Scrooge has a point. If he doesn't celebrate Christmas, what's everyone's problem with forcing it on him? You don't see people bothering, like, the Church of Satan or Frank Costanza during the holiday season. Why ever did you get married? Why? Because I fell in love. <laughs> That's the only thing in the world sillier than a Merry Christmas. Boom. The heart of it. Scrooge is heartbroken. It's actually a huge part of what helps viewers, readers feel empathy for him. But even this movie's theatrical cut removed the song about his lost love. And it breaks my sin and heart to have to sit in this movie twice for it. Everything we know about Scrooge is that he's a fastidious mother So why are all these books grossly akimbo on the shelf? Roundabout, Once again, the entire goddamn city has been bitching about how awful this guy is, but this caroler decides to go rogue and try to charm his ass. Wreath Wrath for the Riff Raff. 8.30 then. Oh, um, if you please, sir, half an hour off hardly seems customary for Christmas Day. How long has Bob been working for Scrooge? Given his disdain for Christmas, he's probably open that day every year, so this shouldn't be a surprise for his employees. With their employer gone at last, Bob Cratchit and the bookkeepers immediately began that most pleasant of activities. The inner space is Christmas orgy. Bob really likes to have his cloaca stroke counterclockwise. Christ, what a waste of time. This is like six rats working on this one task. Great job! One window down! One! It's the Penguin's Christmas skating party! Which will totally f anyone else that walks down this alleyway. But ho 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 and Merry Christmas to go along with your ruptured spleen after you eat f walking through here. Holy f these special effects have aged about as well as the original Tron movie. Merry Christmas, Penguins! Wait, everything speaks English in this universe? Even the f vegetables? But the penguins can only communicate via this weird quacking. Huh, magical enough moment on its own feels the need to add a shooting star to underscore the magic of the moment cliche. How do you know what Scrooge is doing? We're down here and he's up there. Yes, a rat would be excellent at cinema sins. At least it's not the f***ing endgame rat. That rat. Man beats off on nightgown. Oh look, mm. it's Ebenezer Scrooge! Oh. Looking older and more wicked than ever. I knew he wouldn't disappoint us! <laughs> it's funny how Stadler and Waldorf were making fun of contemporary movie theater critics and the Muppets, but these days, many people would use these assholes as stand-ins for Chris and me. And that's just not true. We're much better looking. We specialized in causing pain, spreading fear and doubt. Facebook. You will be haunted by three spirits! Why does this asshole get a second chance at life? Like, it's clear from this song that the Marleys didn't even like Scrooge, but why did they get an opportunity to warn him about his misdeeds? If anything, they should be pissed off that no one did this for them. But I really hate this. You wanted to know what was happening. Now Scrooge's bedchamber is on this side of the house. We've literally just established that Gonzo is an omniscient narrator, so why is Rizzo so horned up to see the action himself? He'll know what's happening every step of the way. There's only two things in this life I hate. Heights and jumping from them. <sighs> and the Dutch. Wait, you're telling me this was just visited by two ghosts and freaked the f*** out but is able to drop off to sleep just an hour or so afterward? What kind of drugs did they have back then and how do I get them? Are you the spirit whose coming was foretold to me? I am. Damn, this Muppet movie took a dark turn into dark crystal territory with no warning. And now I'm skeptical that they'll be able to recover. A touch of my hand and you shall fly. Wow, that is the same thing that guy with the candy in his van told me back in middle school. That was the worst trip of my life. You should try flying American. Okay, but if the cat can see these two, then why can't everyone and everything else? I'm not just talking Scrooge. At least he's from the same time period. This cat is a memory of the past, and it can see Rizzo. That's f***ed up. That means young Scrooge and everyone else in this entire sequence should be able to see them as well, right? Look, I'd maybe buy that they're teaching rudimentary Shakespeare to the fourth graders here, but f***ing Moliere? Dusk has fallen, and the lamplighters are at work. It's Christmas Eve for certain. Narrating the work of civil servants on Christmas Eve really only hammers home the fact that their asses are working on Christmas Eve, no? <laughs> Look, I've made rat sickles before, and it takes a lot longer than that, believe you me. Also, if I'm being consistent with picking apart this movie's rules, and surely I'm not, then I should point out that Gonzo and Rizzo shouldn't have been able to climb the ladder, interact with the fire, or interact with the water that put out the fire, since it's all a shadow of the past, right? Right? It was short. I loved it! Okay, fine. This is me and Chris, and I can't help loving these two irascible assholes. In this hurdy hurdy burski. 
not even sending the fact that the grapes can sing. I'm sending the fact that this asshole needed cloches for two naked grape clusters. Do you know how much the firm is spending for this party? Why'd Scrooge wait until now to bring this up? The money's already been spent, fool. This is like saying, do you know how much I came after the condom broke? I love you, Bill. You did once. Man, most of the time I hate musicals, but this musical has pretty awesome music. And it's been forever since it music. That with the electric mayhem at the party doesn't count. I want a goddamn song. Until the nearby clock began to strike the hour. The church bells ring on the hour all throughout the night. How the f does anyone sleep in London? May I welcome you to Christmas morning! If the ghost of Christmas present actually takes him to Christmas morning a little bit in the future, shouldn't his name be Ghost of Christmas a little bit from now? <laughs> it feels like Christmas! This really pulls on the heartstrings until you remember that Gerald here is in prison for dismembering an entire family a couple years back. I do have a good one, Clara. <laughs> I believe Dickens confirmed this was written into Fred's proposal to Clara. Is it an unwanted creature? Often. What? It's Ebenezer Scrooge! Yes! <laughs> <laughs> I'd feel sad for Scrooge finding out his nephew hates him, but then I remember Scrooge is a massive dickwad who deserves to be hated and also deserves to feel sad for once, the dickwad. Don't be sweeping the chimney now, you're blocking the smell! Not to mention dumping a f ton of creosote onto the Christmas goose. Dude, I obviously love this movie, but it takes way too long to miss Piggy and barely Kermit's at all. Merry Christmas, everyone! Where the hell have Bob and Tim been all day? Sure, they went to a church service, but it's f nighttime, and they're just getting home on Christmas. Was Bob out visiting his other wife and family the rest of the time? He told me that he hoped the people saw him in church. Attention whore. So Piggy birthed out two pigs and two frogs as a result of the mating. Why isn't there a hybrid among the mix? Do pig and frog DNA splice this selectively? Also, while you assholes are singing your long-ass silly Christmas song, this food that Emily slaved over all day is getting ice cold. You know, for a family made out of felt, they sure did fireplace and candle the out of this Christmas feast. As the Cratchit family vanished into the darkness, Scrooge kept his eyes upon Tiny Tim until the last. One of the reasons this is among the best Christmas Carol adaptations ever put to film is that by having a narrator, even one as odd as Gonzo, we get to hear scene and story description in the actual words of the original Dickens novel. But also narration, so... My time upon this globe is very brief. I believe it will end upon the stroke of twelve. But the first spirit appeared at one, when this dude showed up at two. Why the hell are we jumping all the way back to midnight? Hey boss, we're running out of money here. What should we do for the visual effects when Christmas present disappears? Ah, f it. Fade out and put some blinky light brights in there. Bob's your uncle. Next scene. Am I in the presence of the ghost of Christmas yet to come? Man, it would be fantastic if in just one of these adaptations this guy shrugged in response and ambled off while smoking a cigarette. Scrooge watches some dudes laugh about a now dead guy they all hated, and after all he's been through, he still turns to the spirit and asks who the men were talking about. Because Scrooge is a blockhead, I guess. Good with numbers, bad with basic narrative structure. Now I've got his blankets. Oh, his blankets. Why, Mrs. Dill, but they're still warm. This spider is a sick man. Like, even if he's looking to profit off Scrooge's shit after he's dead, why would it matter if these blankets are warm? Sick spider f I would not want to show weak eyes to your father when he gets home. Yikes! Listen, husbands and wives and partners need to be able to have emotions in front of one another. It's healthy. This bottle it up for their sake is why most of my friends say their dad rarely told them he loved them. He wipes his own name off the tombstone and then sobs like he wasn't expecting it because he's an idiot. Scrooge is maybe the dumbest character in all classic literature. A canon that includes Don Quixote and Nick Carraway. Yes, the bedposts were his own. The bed was his own. The room was his own. But the three corpses in the closet, well, that's a story for another time. Do you know whether the prized turkey has been sold in the window? Oh, the one twice as big as me? It's still there. Buy it for me and I'll give you a shilling. I love this. The rich entitled asshole has finally learned the meaning of Christmas and selflessness, and his first act is to pay someone else to do an errand for him so he doesn't have to do it himself. I've learned the error of my ways. Here's some money. Go and further learn on my behalf by purchasing something huge and extreme because I can only do kindness by showing off my money muscles. Also, the movie made a massive deal about Bob being off work for Christmas Day. But what about these sad that have to man the poultry shop, especially first thing in the morning. I'll give you five shillings. What? Not only did Scrooge have these five shillings prepped in an easily throwable coin purse, that was right by the window. Now he's throwing money at a charity. So basically Scrooge has learned to do nice things, but to use his money to do them. Money is still his focus. I was bad? Here, let me buy my goodness. Overnight even. This is like when everyone found out how much more Marky Mark made than Michelle Williams for the reshoots on All the Money in the World. A very average movie, no matter who acted in it. And then he donated his salary to charity to defuse the situation. Like, yeah, prick. You didn't fix the problem of gender salary inequality. You just quieted the media with money. 
Money! Money! Screw it. I'm adding five cents to this movie for Marky Mark's existence. Some things are just out of my control. Here's your turkey, Mr. Scrooge. Follow me, lad. F*** you, Scrooge. This turkey is twice the size of the rodent that brought it. And you're making that poor bastard carry it all the way to the Cratchits? Scrooge literally points three times vaguely and then dumps a bag of gold coins into the shopkeeper's hand. Somehow, he gets what he wanted and paid the right price. But it's magic, not accounting, that makes it happen. Even his gifts to the bookkeepers is... More coal for the fire! Literally a job benefit they should already have been receiving. He shouldn't get kudos for this. He should get raked over the coals for doing the bare minimum kindness after his so-called transformation. He gives Bob Cratchit a raise and pays off his house. But the rap bookkeepers, here's some coal, dicks. She's pretending to be happy now, but inside she's murmuring, Parmesan? What kind of self-respecting mouse eats Parmesan? What am I gonna do, put it on the pasta we don't eat? Bob Cratchit, I've had my fill of this. Jesus, he just handed out gifts to half the city while singing a happy song, but Scrooge takes extra time to with Bob specifically before he unzips his Christmas spirit. Merry Christmas! Yeah, but that turkey's raw as hell, and it would take several hours to cook even with contemporary methods. Plus, they've got to accommodate a ton of new guests in their house on Christmas morning! But also, this is the greatest Muppets movie ever made, it's the greatest Christmas Carol movie ever made, and it's arguably the greatest Christmas movie ever made. So I'll take off three sins as a courtesy. No, oh, my cabbages! A message from the CinemaSins universe! Hey, did you know that we here at CinemaSins have a podcast? Huh? I did not know that. It's true! It's called SinCast, and we've been doing it since all the way back in 2015. Seriously. Excuse, excuse me. Exactly how long have I been asleep? But since you're currently on YouTube, you may prefer to listen to stuff here, right? You're goddamn right. For that reason, we're debuting the official SinCast YouTube channel. Yes! You'll be able to listen to sober movie analysis. This movie does have so many good moments mm -hmm. that I, I do think ultimately it'll be easy for most people to overlook the, the stuff that doesn't work quite as well. In-depth dives into a variety of cinematic topics. No, this movie is absurd. It's my type of absurd, though. Mm -hmm. Interviews with amazing guests. Something in me said, just shut up. And Miss Lansbury said, oh, I couldn't. Well, all right. <laughs> <laughs> And she sang the first couple of lines, oh my God. a cappella, and the place went wild. And much, much more. Yeah, yeah it wasn't until uh, I watched you in bed at the hospital <laughs> <laughs> that he finally gets the girl at the end. I want a whole list of alternative titles. We'll be adding new episodes weekly, and we'll be uploading our backlog of episodes that have been previously published. So, subscribe today, and we hope you enjoy listening as much as we love talking. Thanks for like the There goes Mr. Sneer! Anna! I know you won't listen to your father, but you always listen to me, so I'm asking you not to see Bob White. You're only supposed to blow the bloody doors off! I threw it on the ground! And Rizzo will follow him in. In a minute, I had a little bag of jelly beans over here. Will you just get over here? Nothing, man. It's jelly. I'm eating jelly beans. Run to the light, Caroline. Run as fast as you can. Do you remember this meeting? Yes. I remember. I remember you used to dance. I want you to decide what's right for me. I surrender to your will!